Hello, welcome to the self learning platform by Dr. Sushma Sir. Today we are going to start unit 4 Democratization and Changing Nature of Indian Society. Let us first have introduction about the unit. A close look at the development of in India after independence brings us to the realization that establishment of democracy, economic development coupled with the idea of distributive justice has transformed our traditional society. The state has been the central instrument of change. Politics has performed the role of an agent in facilitating this transformation. When India set out on its journey as an independent nation, in spite of our claim of being a democratic republic, the political participation was constrained by social and economic inequalities. Nevertheless, periodic elections at national, state and local levels have encouraged vigorous participation of traditionally suppressed and deprived sections of society. It can be said that democracy has proved to be a weapon against the privileges and powers of the few. Social and economic changes have gone a long way in relaxing the grip of rigid hierarchical structures, social discrimination and cultural attitudes. In spite of these positive developments, India still has to contend with mass poverty, illiteracy, communal violence, and atrocities against women. This unit deals with the democratization of Indian society and the nature changes which have taken place in it. Now the topic is social reforms and inequalities during colonial period. The social reform movements of the 19th century attracted caste system, which was graded into hierarchy of status. At the bottom of this caste system were placed the untouchables, who constituted nearly 25% of the Hindu population and suffered the worst form of discrimination. They were not allowed to enter temples or to use tanks, wells and irrigation canals used by the higher caste. They could not go to school in which children of upper caste studied. Entry to the public services like police or army was banned for them. The only option before them was to entering the menial jobs considered to be unclean like scavenging, removing dead bodies, etc. In some parts of the country, even their presence was considered polluting. Among the social movements mentioned must be made of some of them, such as the one led by Jyotiba Phule in Maharashtra and Shirin Narayan Guru in Kerala. These movements questioned the caste system and caste-based inequality. Gandhi made abolition of untouchability an integral part of the freedom movement. He made efforts to make the upper caste realize the enormity of injustice done through the practice of untouchability. He opposed the British attempt to treat untouchables as separate from the Hindus. B.R. Ambedkar, who belonged to 
mahar caste an untouchable caste in maharashtra emerged as a powerful leader of the untouchables in the late 1920s he fought against caste system and was in favor of separate electorate for the untouchables his argument was that socially segregated should be politically segregated when in 1932 the communal award provided by for separate electorate gandhi went on fast against it ambedkar agreed to sign the pune pact according to which untouchables were given reserved seats within the general hindu category for centuries women in india have been subjected to oppressions of different kind this has been legitimized by various religions practiced in the country as well they were not supposed to have a personality of their own they were seen as an adjunct of their husband's personality the traditional views had a great appreciation for the role of a wife or a mother but consigned women as indigenous to a low position prevalence of the practices like polygamy parda child marriage and custom of sati undermined their position hindu women had no right to inherit property while muslim muslim women could inherit only half as much as a man could the social reform movements all over the country had a common theme and it was improvement in the condition of women the next point is the idea of social transformation in the wake of independence several members of the constituent as- assembly were of the view that the values and institutions of liberal democracy would transform india's tradition bound social structure as dean is of the view that the members of the constituent assembly opted for the westminster model of liberal democracy a liberal model of democracy based on the idea of individual choice consent liberty and equality was seen as liberating alternative to the old traditional organization of life based on customs ascriptive status hierarchy and inequality according to austin it was also because of our familiarity with the working of these institutions under the colonial period the preamble of constitution pr- pr- promises to secure of all its citizens justice social economic and political in the preamble priority was given to the concept of justice as compared to the idea of liberty equality and fraternity and to social and economic as compared to political justice the order of the words indicate that social and economic justices were considered to be the fundamental norm of the constitution of india the democratic society visualized by the makers of indian constitution lays due emphasis on building a just society Liberal democracy was found only in those countries whose economy was predominantly capitalist. What took place in these societies was democratization of liberalism and liberalization of democracy. The emphasis on economic justice as stated in the preamble and through various provision of directive principles of state policy attempted to ally 
the bias of liberal democracy towards economic inequality. Members of the Constituent Assembly were optimistic about the potential of the democratic institutions provided by the Constitution to transform Indian society. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan held that modern parliamentary democracy would bring about a fundamental change in the structures of Indian society. K. M. Panikar, in his book Hindu Society at Crossroad, published in 1955, expressed his views on parliamentary democracy based on universal adult franchise presented the masses with a dynamite for the destruction of social institutions based on privileges and inequalities. The introduction of civil liberties gave even the mute people a voice. The introduction of a universal adult franchise extended the right to exercise franchise even to the poor and uneducated. W. H. Maurice Jone rejected the need of a strong government for er eradication of poverty and reduction of inequalities. He held that the most substantial erosion of poverty took place in Western Europe only after liberal democracy had been extended far enough to create strong pressure from the ranks of the disadvantaged. He firmly believed that the democracy could be used by disadvantaged as a weapon against the established privileges and power of the few. At the time of independence, the Indian state was being run by an elite political class, which was primarily made of upper caste males. They also had preeminence of urban English educated Brahmins who shared secular outlook. The government under the Congress party was a continuation of the British rule because like the British, it did not attempt to change the social order but to adapt it. Attempts by the parliament and the Congress party to provide for economic, social and educational upliftment of the underprivileged sections have largely been symbolic. The Congress party adopted a conciliary approach to the privileged and did not show much interest in organizing poorer section of society for political action. The rise of backward classes, this is a broad category which includes middle peasants as well as poor peasant cases in Bihar and UP, emerged as important political force from the 1960s in the opposition to the Congress party, which was dominated by the upper caste. The land reforms in these states were only partially successful. However, they had undermined the powers of the upper caste landlords and benefited the backward castes. The intermediate backward class, caste middle and rich peasants, Yadva, Jats, Kurmir and Gujar etc. also benefited from the Green Revolution, community development programs, Panchayati Raj and the cooperatives. This newly acquired economic power made them restless to translate into political supremacy. This was expressed through formation of many farmers parties in the 1960s. This development in the post-independence period is seen as the first democratic upsurge. This period witnessed an expansion in the democratic base of Indian democracy. As political competition became serious, an alternative one-party dominance of Congress party seemed to be emerging. 
in the beginning this group identified itself with socialist and various political outfits launched by the choji chan singh from time to time in these states struggles were raised for replacing the dominance of upper caste by winning seats in legislatures and sticking claims for reservations in the government jobs similar pattern was witnessed in several other states of the country with the rise of backward classes marathas in maharashtra patels in gujarat vocabulary and lingayat in karnataka and reddies and kamas in andhra pradesh here we want to wind up today's lecture thank you so much for your attention